Hi, here is the video for the 11th dynasty. Now we started off with Montuhotep II who uh, ruled Egypt for over 50 years and uh, he was very successful. He had a beautiful um, uh, memorial temple built at Dela Bakri. Now we move on to Montuhotep III. Uh, now he's a different kettle of fish. Um, he only ruled Egypt for 12 years. And, but during his time, he did send uh, an expedition off to uh, the land of Punt. And he claims that uh, he had 12 worlds sunk between the Nile Valley and the Red Sea. Because to get to the land of Punt, they had to take the boats apart, carry them overland across the desert, reassemble them on the Red Sea, along with a caravan of goods for trade, along with fresh water and food, then sail off maybe down to Eritrea, where we think the land of Punt may have been, or maybe uh, Ethiopia, or Somalia even, um, bring back the goods, transfer the caravan overland again, take the boats apart and take them back. So it was a, you know, if you managed to have an expedition to Punt, you did a great thing. Along the way, um, he sent a, um, the, ex, the, expi, the expedition stopped at uh, the Wadi Hammamat. Now in the Wadi Ham, Hammamat, they had um, uh, access to basalt stone, that lovely black stone. And the color black was very special in Egypt. It represented life. Remember, when the Nile flood came, um, it brought with it that black mud from the Ethiopian mountains and they needed that to grow their food. So they associated the color black as being uh, a magical color. It represented life, a very positive color. So if you had a black basalt sarcophagus, you was doing really well. Um, also, other um, materials that they had in the Wadi Hammamat was um, a green type of uh, uh, grey wax stone, um, which is a limestone, of course, and schist stones. So th there were, you know, some very precious stones in the Wadi Hamama. Um, he did uh, attempt some minor buildings uh, at Abydos, of course, to the great god Osiris, the opener of the ways and and the uh, um, the guardian of the afterlife, and of course at the uh, uh, Temple of Todd, which was dedicated to the god Montu, where he took his name from, the war god Montu. <clears throat> but not much happened during his reign apart from that uh, time. So just remember, he ruled Egypt for 12 years, and that was from uh, 2010 BCE to, um, well, 1998 uh, uh, BCE. Now we come on to his successor, who is Montu, uh, Montuhotep IV. Um, he sends an expedition to Punt. He sends um, uh, he sends an expedition to the Wadi Hammamat as well. He ruled Egypt for seven years. So himself and his predecessor ruled for 19 years. You'd have thought they would have had wonderful temples in that time. So if we go back to where Montu uh, the second was buried, okay, he was buried at Dela Bakri. There it is. Wow, impressive. Remember those 50-yard sycamore trees and those six Tanzek trees that the uh, mortuary cult would have to water every day. Um, you know, in order to keep them alive. Well, just across that bluff, on the other side of that bluff, is Jal -er Ab El Naga. And that's where Montuhotep the third and fourth wanted to build their, their tombs. And they wanted to carbon copy what Montuhotep the third uh, did. And what were they trying to achieve? Well, do you remember those early Intef um, in Intef and Inyotef um, uh, rulers in Waset, they were buried in a Safro tomb. Remember the Safro tombs where all the tombs are lined up 
one after the other. Well, that's what Montuotep the third and fourth were attempting to do. A giant Safro. There's Montuotep the second. There's Montuotep the third and Montuotep the fourth. Unfortunately, their project was never finished. All they managed to construct during that uh, 19 odd years was a causeway, a descending passageway going down into a burial chamber and um, a couple of uh, 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 nasty local sarcophaguses. Um, we do know a mortuary cult was installed there because from the 12th dynasty onwards they left inscriptions on the cliffs above the entrance to the uh, tombs. And now we come to, uh, so we've got 19 years and two unfinished tombs. Hmm, sort of uh, makes you wonder what's going on in Egypt at that time. Then we come across this prophecy, the prophecy of Nefreti. And Nefreti says that back in the Old Kingdom, a powerful ruler is going to come when Egypt is in chaos and feared by her enemies. And that uh, powerful ruler is going to be called Amun. Amenhotep or Amneni and Amneni will bring salvation he will get rid of chaos he will banish the enemies and bring order back to uh, uh, the land of Egypt now funny enough uh, Montuhotep IV had a governor probably for Upper Egypt called Amenet and Amenet went to the Wadi Hammamat to retrieve a sarcophagus for his king. And as they entered the Wadi, a strange thing happened. And um, a gazelle died, uh, fell down and died in the, in the exact spot where they were going to cut the sarcophagus. Now there are two powers in Egypt. The first one is the power of the king. He is the living Horus. He is the go between heaven and earth. He can make law. He can make order. And the other are the gods. The gods can make laws too. So these prophecies were a way of commoners legalizing their rule. Because with the death of um, Montuhotep uh, IV, his governor, Amenet I, became the king of Egypt. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. So that is the beginning of the 12th dynasty. Very exciting time. Those 12th dynasty kings are my favourite kings. They did amazing um, reforms in Egypt for the common people. No longer were the people going to be ignored. They were going to be known as Remet Kemet, the people of the black lands. Okay, but that's in the next video. So be patient. So if you've enjoyed this, uh, click on, please click on the subscribe button. Um, there's, uh, you can go and visit these uh, places at Jal El uh, Naga on the west bank of uh, Waset, Thebes, stroke Luxor. Uh, you don't need permission to do that. There's not a lot to see unless you're a diehard archaeologist like me. Make sure you take a torch if you go down in that descending passageway and make sure there's no bats because, you know, it can get pretty nasty and smelly in those places. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the information and the pictures and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.